guys welcome back to another episode of many tribes one kingdom it's your good friend john here as always joined by our co-host <laughs> hey guys it's dustin <laughs> uh, okay so we got a exciting video for you guys today one that is very near and dear to my heart we have another song we're reviewing and today's song is o boundless salvation and if you don't know that one you're probably not affiliated with the Salvation Army. Well, you know, and the wonderful part about this song is that Boundless Salvation is not just found in Salvation Army hymn books. It's actually found in many churches, Baptist, Methodist, and probably even Lutherans. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, this song is it's so wonderful. And the words, we're going to go into each verse of this song. But mm -hmm. each of these verses, it's, you don't notice any theology that, is singular for one specific church. Like there are songs that are meant for like one single church, and that's not really a good song. But this song, of Boundless Salvation, though William Booth, as you know, is the founder of the Salvation Army. He didn't just make it for the Salvation Army. He made it to express um, God's grace in our lives, every ounce of what God has done for us, for his people. And it's so wonderful because now everybody can sing it from many different backgrounds and theologies. Yes. And so the thing about this song, before we really get into it, I want to talk about a few things about it first. This song does have seven verses. Very rarely will you find them playing all seven verses all the way through. Uh, I've only found maybe one or two versions on the Internet that do play it all the way through. They usually leave one or two of the verses out. Now, I think that's a shame because like the officers in Ireland told me, like Lieutenant Tim Lennox told me, you know, this is a story. All seven verses taken together are a story. And as, as I told Dustin, this is a salvation experience. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's just get into it, John. You think you're ready? I think I'm ready. All right. So I'll read the first verse. O oh, boundless salvation, deep ocean of love, O oh, fullness of mercy, Christ brought from above, the whole world redeeming so rich and so free, now flowing from all men, for all men, now flowing for all men, now flowing for all men, come roll over me. All right, starting off with a powerful, powerful expression. Hmm. I'm going to move this camera a little bit so that it's better. Yeah, so really this song just goes right into it. Mm -hmm. It takes a deep dive already into salvation. I mean, literally the first line, oh, boundless salvation. Literally, he's already telling you from the first, not even the first full line, just but the first half of the line, first line. He's telling you what this verse is going to be discussing, what it's going to be. Um, addressing and really explaining towards people who may not have experienced it, or who have experienced it. Well, even beyond that, uh, it, it's not just the verse, it's the entire song. Right. Yeah. Well, one thing I like, and you'll notice this consistently throughout the entire song, is that God's love and salvation is compared to a deep ocean. Mm. And I like where he says fullness of mercy Christ brought from above the showing that, you know, this is showing that we need Jesus Christ in order to be saved. We don't save ourselves. The salvation we experience comes from Jesus himself. Mm. All right. Ready for the next verse? Yes, sir. All right. I'll read this one. Okay. My sins, they are many. Their stains are so deep and bitter the tears of remorse that I weep. But useless is weeping, thou great crimson sea. Thy waters can cleanse me. Thy waters can cleanse me. Thy waters can cleanse me. Come, roll over me. Oh, man. Oh, I got chills from that one. I me mean, just, just from the first part, he's already he's now uh, pointing, pointing out a mirror towards himself. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I am full of sin. I have so much that I don't, I, you know, so much dirt and gunk within me. But then he gets to the third line and he says, it's all useless. You know, that's, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter anymore because his waters can come and cleanse me. And I like 
the last three words of every one of these verses, you're going to see that. But it says, roll over me. I love that because it's talking about an enveloping of somebody. Just mm-hmm. coming, you know, fully. He's not saying like, oh, just 10%, 50%. No, he's saying 100%. Come roll over me. I, I need every part of me cleansed. Well, even beyond that, when he uses the word roll, he doesn't say come cover me. He says come roll over me. And usually when something rolls over something else, it's this idea of it just taking over, not just like slowly rising above it, but this idea of this great force just slamming into it and covering it. All right. Now the third verse, my tempers are fitful. My passions are strong. They bind my poor soul and they force me to wrong. Beneath thy blessed billows, deliverance I see. O come mighty ocean, O come mighty ocean, O come mighty ocean and roll over me. All right. So this one, this, this verse right here, I like how he describes it his tempers and his passions they are very strong but they are wrong Mm. you know i I see parallels here to paul's description of the war between the spirit and the flesh Mm. you know this is this is one of the few verses in here that actually well this first one actually shows that there is a resistance and just Mm. as john mentioned there is going to be resistance from us Mm -hmm. um and that's why, again, I love why he had, ends with the, those three words, roll over me. He's saying, you know, this is who I am, but I need you just to completely take over and remove it from me. Yes. You know, you know, you know remove all that resistance because I know what you can offer me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, like with every verse, Jesus Christ is the one bringing the salvation. Mm. The salvation is an extension of God's great love and has nothing to do with any goodness on our part. Notice in this song, he's not trying to justify himself. In fact, that really stands out in the next verse, which are we ready for that one? And now I got one more thing. Okay. okay. Come mighty ocean. Again, I like that because it sits right there, not in the middle, but just before you hit the middle. He's talking about God's mercy, God's just mighty power. And he compares it to the oceans. And as we know, the ocean makes up more than 70% of this world we live in now. So just imagine that. All that water coming rushing over you. Can you withstand that? No. No. I've been knocked, <laughs> I've been knocked down a few times by the ocean. Of course, I'm by done. tiny waves, right? <laughs> no. Of course, I'm dumb enough to run straight into the giant waves when they come in and slam into you when the tide's coming in. Uh-huh. I'm dumb enough to run right into those. But, you know, actually, no. It, I think that's a perfect illustration for this song, except not being dumb, being joyful. Mm-hmm. So we're ready for the next verse? because I, this, this, I uh, love this one because this is one that's straight in the middle. I think it's one of the critical pieces of the song. This is probably my favorite verse, if I had to be honest. All right. So I'll read it. Now tossed with temptation, then haunted with fears, my life has been joyless and useless for years. I feel something better most surely would be if once thy pure waters, if once thy pure waters, if once thy pure waters would roll over me. Oh, man. I love (laughs) this verse. Because this one, really, when I first heard the song, this is the verse that spoke to me. I was in the middle of just struggling with my failures in the past and where it says my life has been joyless and useless for years. When I sang that verse, I was singing it from my heart, not because those were the words for the song, but they really felt like the words coming from my heart. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is just a perfect image. You know, th- this, this verse reminds me of a particular book in the Bible. Can you guess it? Well, I don't, I don't have to let you guess it, but it's Ecclesiastes. I win. What do I win? Uh, nothing, because I didn't hear you say that. Anyways, it reminds me of Ecclesiastes. Mm-hmm. Just the pure utterances of how the world actually is. 
and how, you know, our toil, our works, nothing that we can do can bring any kind of per permanent joy into our lives, except for making that one critical choice, mm -hmm. being cleansed by Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, it goes into the fact that our lives, aside from Christ, apart from Christ, our lives were useless, joyless and useless. It doesn't matter what you've done beforehand, whether you've walked on the moon, been a Nobel Prize winner, you could have charted the deepest paths of the ocean and invented the airplane. But without Christ, your life is useless. Not just less significant, not just less important, but useless. Useless is a very powerful word. It means of absolutely no purpose, no function, no good. Life without God is like grasping at smoke. And that, yes, that's a line from Ecclesiastes. Yes, it is. You can't grab smoke, right? You can't just go out and just like, Shh. oh, I got smoke on my hand. No, you can't. I mean, my face seems to grab it enough whenever I'm around a campfire. It always blows towards me. Yes, but you can't grab it, right? You can only no. breathe it in. Oh yeah, and 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 that's the thing. Like, yeah, you it, can't you can't grasp that. You got to just and and here's the other beautiful part. Going back to you know just the previous verse, mm -hmm. the ocean pulls you. Yeah, and we have to fall into. Because oh. if we try jumping into life, we're just going to be tossed about. But if we follow the currents of where Christ has... See, so that's what like, Christ is. He is that current in the ocean who takes you to him, mm -hmm. takes you on that path of righteousness. So in that big, large ocean, follow the current that Christ has planned, Christ has for you. Yes. All right, now going into... Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. I have one more thing to say about this verse. Gotcha. And that's right after he says his life is useless. He says, I feel something better most surely would be. He has this confidence that God is there. He knows that whatever Christ has offered him is so much better than whatever useless, meaningless experiences he has had beforehand, before he met the Savior. Mm. Okay, I'm uh done. You ready for the next verse, Sean? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Verse five. Oh, ocean of mercy, of longing I've stood on the brink of thy wonderful life-giving flood. Once more I have reached the soul-cleansing sea. I will not go back. I will not go back. I will not go back until, until it rolls over me. And it, <laughs> I love this because when it's showing is that he's waiting for Christ to cleanse his sins and not just waiting for that, not just like stand in a waiting period after that cleansing. He says, I'm going to go back into that world. You, you pulled me out of, not because I want, you know, I want to live that life again, but because I want to teach others and pull them towards Christ. Yes. And I, I almost view this as this is the verse you sing right after you are saved. This uh -huh. is the thing right after you've accepted the free gift of salvation. You know, it says on, you know, I oft longing I've stood on the brink of thy wonderful life giving flood. And then, you know, it says he's reached the soul cleansing sea, but he will not go back until it rolls over him. He is saying, I understand that I've been saved, but I will not just turn around. I will not just take this and run. I will not go forward in life without Christ. He is calling for his sanctification here. You know, in the third line says, once more I have reached the soul cleansing sea. Mm -hmm. Not just saying that he's going towards it once, but saying he's going to keep going back as many times as he needs to. Yes. And 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 that's that's a powerful thing. You know, he's teaching us that you don't just get to say a prayer once and then be done. You don't get just get to say, God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. You don't get to, you don't get to say the sinner's prayer once and then, you know, get to go to heaven. That's not how it works. Mm. He's going back again and again to that fountain, that ocean of Christ's love and Christ's blood that washes us clean from our sins. 
Hmm. All right, I think we're ready for the next verse, John. All right. The tide is now flowing. I'm touching the wave. I hear the loud call of the mighty to save. My faith's growing bolder. Delivered I'll be. I plunge neath the waters. I plunge neath the waters. I plunge neath the waters. They roll over me. This is the sanctification verse, if you ask me. Okay. Because he's saying that the tide is now growing. It's growing stronger. He, not only now, you know, but before he could just see the deliverance, but now he says he can hear God calling to him. Hmm. And when we sing this, we should believe that God is calling to us. We should recognize that. And we should want to plunge beneath those waters of deliverance. You stole my thunder, John. <laughs> that's what I was about to say. <laughs> hey, but you know, that's wonderful. Um, it is. I plunge neath the waters. It's not saying Christ reached out with the ocean, and just pulled him in, or took a tidal wave and knocked him into the water. No. He's saying, I'm going to jump into that. I'm willing to go forward into that. You know, though I see a large, vast ocean in front of me, I'm going to plunge into it because I know who's in there. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, I love this song so much. All right. You ready for the last verse, John? I'm just getting chills just waiting. <sighs> yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. And now the seventh and final verse that really brings it all home. And now, hallelujah. The rest of my days shall gladly be spent in promoting his praise, who opened his bosom to pour out this sea of boundless salvation, of boundless salvation, of boundless salvation for you and for, and for me. me. Oh, my goodness. If this is not the calling on our lives, to, you know, to minister to the people of the world, I don't know what else is there. I yeah. mean, just amazing. Because, you know, now he's not only going out to minister out of floors, he's going to it joyfully and continuing to sing the praises of God to the people, not just to God himself, but to the people around him, just because there's this overwhelming joy, this pure, pure joy within him. And he just can't keep it inside. It's just like a, I don't know, like a well that can't be closed. It just keeps gushing out the water. Now you stole my thunder. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh i just love that <laughs> i love that I'm getting, I'm getting chills i'm getting i'm getting chills just thinking about this he oh man says, shall gladly be spent in promoting his praise he doesn't say that he's going to begrudgingly give god worship he's not gonna say oh i gotta go to church and sing some sing some songs no he's gladly promoting his praise not just praising god himself but like dustin said promoting his praise he's taking it to the people to everyone because god opened himself up to pour out the boundless salvation for who who does god pour everyone out? you and for me that's everyone Whew. oh man i got so excited sorry guys i know you saw my camera go up i uh Unfortunately, closed my computer because I got so excited and I forgot. Oh, wait, I need the computer open. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, just going off what John said. Yes, absolutely. This this song, it, it just increasingly as you sing from verse one to verse seven, it just increasingly becomes something of your life. You can see yourself in this song. And that's that's the beauty of these songs. That you can see yourself in it. That's is, that. That's that. I can't really explain. That's something you have to experience. Yes, like I would strongly encourage you to sing this song, you know, mm. by yourself or bring it, bring it to whoever leads the music at your church. You know, whether you have a brass band or an organ or guitars or anything, whatever instruments you play, or even just a cappello, okay. I would strongly encourage you take this to your church and. Because I, I, I honestly believe that if we sing this hymnal and if we believe that this is us, if we believe that this is what Jesus Christ has done for us, I think we would become so much more serious in our spiritual walk with him. Amen, brother. Amen. So that is it for this song. 
Um, we are going to leave a link to one of the songs, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I will leave a link to the uh, Social Marines Brass version of the song. There's no vocals to it, but I think that's wonderful because you need to be the one singing the song, not just someone you going along with someone else singing it. Because this is your story. This is God's story on your life. Yes. Oh, I do have an important announcement before we finish. He's pregnant. No. Uh, <laughs> no. We are, we are currently sitting at the 99 subscriber mark. Mm. Now, as soon as we hit 100, we have a giveaway that's coming up. We're not going to tell you what it is yet. However, I'm going to make this pledge. If we can hit that 100 subscriber by Resurrection Day, this Sunday, we will give away two instead of one. And I will personally pay for that out of my own stuff for the giveaway. Awesome. Oh, and so, Brad, I can't enter that, can I? <laughs> no, you can't. no, you can't. Wait, I'm a subscriber, though. You can't get the giveaway. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, and I, but, you know what? I might even match. Mm, what so match? Three. Four. Four. Oh, oh yes, four. Yeah, okay. there we go. Four four shirts. So now, oh, yes. share this oh, with no. your friends. Just share this with your friends. And I'm not going to make that bet. I'm going to just tell you this right now. We had the 200 mark. Yeah, that's going to be, you know, we go up to 200. No, I'm not going to shave my head or shave off my beard. I'm not making that pledge again. As no, 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 you guys. Uh, uh-uh. but if you hit that hundred mark, hundred uh, subscriber mark by Resurrection Day, me and John are going to match it and go and go to you four. It's going to be four T-shirts given away. Oh shoot, I accidentally said it. Uh, you said it. Uh huh. Sorry about that. Uh, forget I said that. <laughs> anyway. But we also want to. We also just want to say thank you guys so much for all of you regulars who tune in and put up with our wacky nonsense and hopefully the spiritual truth that comes through as well. You know when, <laughs> when, when Dustin and John can get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit move. Mm-hmm. And we also want to say, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. We're very happy to have you here. Also, I don't forget about that bell note. Bell, so you can be notified about every single thing. We hear that nice little ding every time we upload a video. <laughs> Have a great day, guys, and God bless. You.